Hey guys, it's Your Kingdom Come, and today we have a new addition to the podcast. Yes. Um, well, want to explain, Troy? Yes, we have. <laughs> we have. We have added a third member, <laughs> but it, but it's not what you think. <laughs> When we uh, when we talk about uh, you know we re- we've talked a few times about seeker friendly churches, mm. um, and we had something come through the news again this week again. Uh, you know, there's That's always surprising. these these things always you know they just keep coming through the news. And oh boy, do we have a good one for you today? <laughs> we are going to talk about a certain seeker friendly church. Now, uh, you know, as I was looking around my house. Uh, I noticed that uh, you know I'm I'm not a huge fan of seeker friendly churches as you as you may uh, well be I, aware. I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I found something in my house that was a little bit out of place because I said, you know, this thing belongs in a seeker friendly church. It looks like it would fit right in the lobby. You know, <laughs> it does. It does. So we have we have decided to introduce to you the uh, the the seeker friendly church plant this thing fits right out in the middle of of the seeker friendly church lobby you know i bet i bet andy stanley's church has one of these right out in the lobby you know like i i i don't doubt it so so today uh, and every time we talk about seeker friendly churches from now on our uh, seeker friendly church plant is going to join us on the podcast because I mean it, let, let's let's face it when we're talking about seeker friendly churches they want to just make the mood just right oh yeah so you know it's only natural that when we want to talk about seeker friendly churches we want to make the mood just right too <laughs> you know so we had to we had to add in our you know our new friend the seeker friendly church plant all right so I hope you like it hopefully you guys will be drawn now to our podcast well yeah because of the plant <laughs> <laughs> of course of course you know instead yeah, of black yeah, behind us yeah, now, yeah. next thing you know next podcast we might have strobe lights yeah 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 maybe we'll have a giant plant behind us we might have fog you know? smoke coming off Troy's depending hair. on you know depending on the level <laughs> of heresy the plant grows right so so <laughs> so if there's a lot of heresy we'll have like a tree behind us <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. so today uh we we uh we noticed in the news um that this guy who used to be the pastor of hillsong church um hopefully you're familiar with that name uh if you're not uh don't don't watch their messages don't <laughs> yeah um yeah. A guy named Carl Lentz, um, he was the pastor of Hillsong for a number of years mm-hmm. until he was removed amidst a, uh, a, a, sexual, um, a sexual sin scandal mm-hmm. um, uh, amidst, amidst other issues that were going on there as well mm-hmm. at Hillsong Church. And he's kind of been out of the public eye for a little while. Mm-hmm. And he's come back on the radar. He's been, he's been hired by... Yeah, he's been hired by a church. Um, and it is a seeker-friendly church. Mm. Um, and what we're going to do in this video is, uh, you know, just kind of think of the context. If you're, if you're not familiar with Carl Lentz, you know, go, go take some time to, to research him. Don't listen to any, to, you know, to the stuff that he says. But, when, you know, just, just think about Carl Lentz and think about the fact that he is, um, you know, he's, let's, let's say that he's trying to get right. Mm. If he's trying to get right, is this person that we are about to play that we are about to react to is this person a healthy pastor for him to be under as he tries to get right we want you to make the Mm. decision on that uh we're going to be reacting to uh a clip from michael todd Mm. um yeah that is that is your your seeker friendly church of the week transformation Transformation church yeah yes so now we want you guys to decide is is transformation church a healthy place for carl lentz to get right mm. you tell us you be the judge after listening to this message yeah and i would also add too um as you said carl lentz uh cheated on his wife mm-hmm. and then uh he was a pastor cheated on his wife uh for a while was mm-hmm. cheating on his wife and yep. then got caught and then was um, kicked off staff kicked off the pastorate yep and now he's back on the scene and the funny thing is is he's not just a member at transformation no Church. he's no. on staff yes. Yeah, that's the that, that's the scary thing. Too. So to restore, uh, can a pastor be restored? Depends on the case, honestly, mm. and it, it just depends. But you can never 
to restore a pastor that quickly mm-hmm. from that type of sin mm-hmm. is foolish. Yes. Because, uh, yeah, okay, the pastor can say, I repented, and maybe he's, tru- maybe he's truly repented. Yeah. And we know he's a false teacher, so maybe he's not re- truly repented from the from the false gospel he preaches. Yeah. But let's say on the character level, right, say if it was a true gospel preacher, because this does happen in mm-hmm. biblical churches where biblical uh, – elders where they preach the true gospel or a uh, true biblical pastor, they preach the true gospel and they fall into sin. You know, what do we do with that? Well, um, you don't restore them within a year or two. There's no time. Set, there's no time set. We're, we're not saying, Oh, within three years, maybe we'll put you back in, in the pastor. That that's no, no. that that's not how it no. works. Um, because when you commit a sin like that, it shows your faithlessness mm, and yes. to regain your faithfulness back, uh, takes time. Yeah, it takes yeah. time, a lot of time, yeah. and sometimes you'll never get it back. Mm-hmm. You know, because your reputation is destroyed. Right. So. Right. Yeah. So you know, as we as we look at this, you know, we we just we want this to be a um, a lesson, right? And 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 as you know, as we walk through it, uh, undoubtedly we're gonna you know we're gonna see things that we didn't see the first time too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but as we as we look through this, we wanna we wanna stress one important thing. We're not doing this out of, uh, you know, we, we, we don't hate Michael Todd, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we love him and we want him to repent um, in the places where he, has, uh, where, where he has gone wrong, where he has gone astray, where he has gone into false teaching mm-hmm. as, he, um, as he leads this large, large, large church with many people that are just uh, following every move he makes. Yep, yep. Um, and if, if there are people out there who, who, uh, who listen to Michael Todd, uh, the other purpose of this video is to warn you. You know, I know this was a big part of your testimony. Yeah, yeah, part of my testimony. So for my first year being a Christian, an actual, I, I believe I was truly saved. Um, I actually watched Michael Todd for about a year, I would say, probably a year. I watched Michael Todd, as in he, and even during COVID, when COVID happened, I watched Michael Todd every Sunday. That mm. was my pastor, yep. right? And and then uh, the following summer, I came across Paul Washer. Uh, <laughs> hence why I quote him every podcast. Yeah, Anyways, I yeah. <laughs> uh, love you, Paul, if you're watching this. But <laughs> uh, you saved my life, basically. Um, yeah, yeah. But I was listening to uh, Michael Todd, um, and and I listened to him for a full year, and then I kind of came out of that, and I was like, whoa, mm. he's, he's he's teaching something else, you know? Yeah. Yep. But anyways, uh, for the sake of time, we're gonna get right into this video. Yep. Yep. All right, here we go. No peace. No patience. All them people that be street preaching and yelling at people while they trying to take their family to Disney World. I just be wanting to go and have conversations like, bro, there's a better way to do this. Do you really think... Repent! All will die and go to hell! And it's like, many, like, I'm like, this is three. And those moments, I'd be like, dang, ain't you a Christian? I, you know, it puts you in a position where it's like, are you with that guy? It's like, well, okay, when you say that guy, what are you? See, saying? see, here's the thing. I feel exactly the same way about him. <laughs> when a, when yeah, a person yeah. comes up to me and goes, wait, so, so you're with that guy? You're with my, you believe the same thing as, as Michael Todd. Mm-hmm. And I would say the same thing is, oh, hold on. Wait a second. Yeah. Like we don't, we don't believe the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the stuff that he teaches, Yeah, you yeah. know? So, and, and, and with the street preaching part, he basically said, um, there should be no street preaching and we should go about it a different way. Yeah. I have a lot to say about that uh, probably it would take more than this podcast to get my point across but to put it plain and simple um, street preaching happened in the book of Acts mm-hmm. uh, Jesus cried out in the temple mm-hmm. right it says that flipped over tables yep. um, uh, preached the go- preached the good news of the kingdom right yep. all this stuff um, so street preaching is is a, a biblical thing street preaching should happen yep. and and the other thing too is when you talk about street preaching and and obviously michael todd has no idea what even street preaching is yeah. even if he has done it you know i'm not not diminishing that but uh he has no idea what that is because from my own heart i love evangelism i love uh if, if I if I had a podcast of 30 minutes to talk about the gospel and I did it for 10 years straight, I'd have no problem with it. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so this come this is this hit, this hits uh, for me home. But when you talk about street preaching, and he says, "Oh, we don't we don't need people like that. We don't need people screaming out talking about hellfire and this and that." You know what I want to do? I want to grab that. I want to grab Michael Todd by the neck. Shove his face into the pits of hell for one second. Say, "This is why we street preach." Mm. Preaching there. This this is why we go out and we cry out, "Repent for the kingdom of God is oh, here." Oh yeah, yeah. This is why we do this. Yep. Because this is not a matter of getting your best life now. Yeah. This is a matter of heaven or hell. Mm, this yeah. is this is no joke, yep. man. And to and to make fun of people who who get up, and it's bold. It's 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 not it's not like. Uh, this is this is some easy thing to do. You have to stand up in front of people in this mm. in this world yep. who oppose you, and you have to stand in front of these people and proclaim the gospel. And they're enemies of the cross, and they're going to make fun of you. They're going to do this and that. And Michael Todd, it looks like you're on the other side of the fence, making fun of people who street preach. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. When they're when they're in their heart, yeah. don't get me wrong. There is street preachers who preach with wrong motives, mm-hmm. but. Majority of street preachers are preaching for the simple fact they want to see people saved from the wrath of God. Yeah, I feel like I mean, if 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 Michael Todd was around uh, in the days of the early church, he'd be trying to explain away the 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 way that the apostles preached the gospel too. Yeah. Have you seen the way yeah. that Peter preached the gospel? Yeah, yeah. He was like, "You guys crucified Christ, <laughs> and you're yeah. still lost." Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. like that, and and even like, see, here's here's the thing. A lot, a lot can be said about, um, you know, about straddling the fence and all this type of stuff that mm-hmm. he's talking about, right? Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, in America, the gospel, specifically in America, mm-hmm. the gospel is under attack right now. Yeah, there yeah. are so many people that want to distort the gospel, make it something else, make it not, uh, you know, make it not the, the the power of God unto salvation, right? They yeah. want it. They want to change it. They want to make it so that that's not essential. Yeah. Um, or, or they want to, they want to, they want to even get you to believe in like a different God, mm, right. Then, yeah. then is the God that we see in the, in the pages of scripture. Right. Well, uh, back in, back in the early church, um, in, in the, um, in, in the region of Galatia, mm-hmm. the, uh, the gospel was under fire there too. And yes. have you read the first three chapters? I mean, the whole book, have you read the whole book of Galatians? Paul went nuts on these people. In that book, <laughs> yeah. he did. He went yeah. nuts on them. I, I even I, I looked right. These people, the the people who um you know who who were causing the trouble mm. in the church in Galatia, one of their big problems was that they wanted to add you know they wanted to add works to salvation. Right. Yeah. So here's yeah. what Paul says in Galatians three ten: For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. Mm. For it is written. Cursed be anyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. All right. So. Yeah. Paul comes out against the people who are attacking the gospel and says, you guys are under a curse. He says it in chapter one, too. If you preach a different gospel, mm. you are to be anathema. Yeah. You are to be accursed. Yeah. Right. And just to, to, to think about that. Right. Now you apply that to today where the gospel is once again under attack. Don't tell me to calm down. Yeah. Don't yeah. tell me to calm down yeah. when the gospel is under attack, when people yeah. are believing a false gospel and marching off a cliff into hell. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me yeah. to calm this down is, because Paul didn't calm down. Yeah. Yeah. You got that right, man. And, and it's too serious of a matter yeah. to be joking about yeah. or to be yeah. or to be um, uh, uh, distorting, you mm. know what I mean? Or trying to make it uh, palatable to, to people, make it make it uh, softer for people yeah. or make it make it more acceptable to people. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. And uh, there is some there. I would say, though, there are little snippets and bits that michael todd does say i'm not just I'm not gonna say the whole sermon's trash yeah 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 there are s- certain points where he's where i'm like yeah i agree with that but mostly in its context it's absolutely terrible <laughs> right then he you contradicts know? himself like 10 minutes later yeah. you know he says yeah. that's the thing that's the problem with a lot of, and we'll get into this we, yeah. we'll get into this i'm kind of jumping ahead of myself but yeah but, just the, sh- the short of it is the, the gospel, you, you can't distort the gospel. You can't yeah. confuse people about the yeah. gospel as a preacher. You just can't. Yeah. So. All right. Next clip. That there was an option of other in the kingdom. In culture, you can make up whatever you want to. In culture, you can build whatever you want to. But if the truth of the matter is that if we are going to submit under what the king says, 
I'm going to have to wrestle with what I don't even fully understand. Oh God, pastors don't say this because they want to be absolute. Well, why did that? I don't freaking know. I know, honestly, I wish God would have made it so much simpler and it was like A, B, C, or D, like frick. No, I'm serious. As a pastor, like, so what do you think about game? I don't know. As a pastor, if you don't know what your view is on gay marriage, you do not deserve to be in a pulpit. Yes. And I know, so first of all, you guys might say, oh, I'm quoting him out of context. Um, his main point on saying he doesn't understand gay marriages is, is he doesn't understand why God would make it uh, just male and female, mm. why God would do it this way. Mm -hmm. And as a pastor, if you don't know why gay marriage is wrong, and, and he might know why gay marriage is wrong, but still, um, if you don't know why gay marriage is wrong, why it's a sin, why God forbids it, then you should not be in that position because he clearly says, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Sound like Joel Osteen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't that's know. true. And, yep. and, and I give you the simple answer. The reason why God forbids gay marriage, first of all, because it's against his created order. Mm. We have a an episode on homosexuality that we did a while back yep. that talks about this. But first of all, it's against his created order. God created a male and female. Now, why did God not allow gay marriage? Obviously, because it's against the created order, like we said but also because it destroys humanity. Mm -hmm. That is not the way God intended humanity. Yep. Um, for us to participate in homosexuality, is it, it will literally destroy ourselves. And, yep. and God knows best, yeah. right? Like when I... Uh, like if I talk to a homosexual and they're like, why, you know, why, why does, why do, why doesn't God want me to, to do this? Why doesn't God want me to carry out the desires of my heart? Mm. Because you're going to destroy yourself. Yeah. You know, God yeah. knows best, mm. you know, same thing when you talk to a person about why can't I fornicate? Yeah. Well, yeah, well we because God knows week. best. Yes. That's yeah. why. And yep. if, and if you can't answer that as a past, I, I know people who are who are 10 years old who can answer that question mm -hmm. better than a pastor yep that's that's a shame mm -hmm. my friend that's that's a shame uh michael todd that that you don't even know your view on on why gay marriage is wrong or why it's not allowed mm -hmm. like yeah yeah but um you got anything else to add to that no i think you i think you hit it on okay. the head All yeah right. that was that was good we can keep going if you okay. want all right but I do know in the kingdom, they're going to cancel me. In the, I'm not the king. I don't, I don't know why he decided to do it like this. Just prove my point. Mm. I don't know why you're wrestling like that. And I don't know what to do to help you, but to stand with you. And pray with you and not and you're welcome at transformation church trans is in the title transformation you no 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 <laughs> don't take okay when you talk about transformation biblical transformation Biblical transformation is being is is being transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, mm. into the kingdom of Christ, mm. of King Jesus. And you know what he says? He says that when we when we are saved, we are no longer slaves to sin. Mm -hmm. And he says that we are transformed mm. in Romans 12. He says we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Mm. We're conformed to Christ. And then it says after that, it says so that we may be able to test and see what the will of God is. And we mm. see clearly in the word of God that to be transgender is not the will of God. Yeah, yeah. It is it is not. And and I cannot believe to take to take a biblical a beautiful biblical mm, yeah. biblical doctrine like sanctification yeah. and just trample all over it and spit all over it by saying that this applies to transgenderism. Yeah. That that's probably the worst thing he said in this sermon yet. Mm, and yeah. I'm sorry I'm sorry to, to, to get going on that. But we've had we've had a no, lot of things sorry. <laughs> we've had a lot of things go on in this, you know, um in, in this world uh recently as it relates to transgenderism. And yeah. and we don't we don't hate transgender people. We we love transgender people and we want them to we want them to see 
God's true plan mm, for their life, yeah, yeah. which is which is to to reconcile themselves with the way that God made them. Mm. If you're on the other side of that screen and you identify as transgender, God made you in his image. And no matter what you do to try to mutilate that image, to try to change that image, you will never get away from the fact that God made you in his image. And every, every different progression or transformation that you try to make to yourself will only take you further and further away from that mm. image. Yeah. yeah. That image. And the only place that you'll truly find hope and peace is when is when you you come to grips with the fact that you were made in his image mm, and yeah. you become okay with that image mm -hmm, that yeah. he made you in and you realize that to do anything else is rebellion against god yeah, yeah. we need to be very clear on this mm. as christians yeah we had this week and uh, you know our our hearts go out to the to the school in nashville that was that was shot up this week uh, we had, you know, we had this week someone who, uh, who was uh, transgender, and went into a Christian school. Specifically targeted the school because it was a Christian school. Went into the school looking for the pastor of the church that was associated with the school, so that she could shoot him. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find the pastor, so she shot his nine-year-old daughter instead. And somehow, because of unclear preaching like this. We can't even come to a consensus as Christians on the fact that being transgender is sin. Yeah, and the yeah. fact that we've been so passive on that and that mm. we've been so unwilling to speak the truth about what is in the Word of God about this issue, I, I, that, that's part of the reason why things like this are, are allowed to happen and then the church doesn't, uh, doesn't, yeah. doesn't come to a consensus on the fact that this is evil and wrong. Yeah, I yeah. cannot believe that there are people in the church... Um, who who have tried to come up with other reasons mm. why uh, that school shooting happened? I, yeah. I I can't believe that there are people who have tried to come up with other reasons why. Because yeah. the only reason why is because the heart without God is sick mm -hmm. and wicked. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the only way to be changed is to be reconciled to Him. Yeah. So I hope you hear that not not out of hate, but out of love. Because I, 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 don't, I don't like it when people go and destroy the image that God made them in. Mm -hmm. The yeah. image of God. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't like that. And that's not good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and notice also, too, in, the, in, this, in, this, in this clip that he says, I'll stand by you. I don't know what to do, but I'll stand by you. I'll pray for you. You know, this and that. It's funny how he doesn't even call the transgender person to repentance. Yeah. Um, later on in his, in his message, when he calls people to pray the prayer of salvation and, and maybe we should come out of video on the, on the prayer, the pray, the prayer and all that. Mm, yeah, but, yeah. but, um, he, you know, he goes through the whole, raise your hand, pray the prayer. And then, then the only time he says repent is the street preaching part. And then, and then the, uh, the, at the end where he's like, I repent, you know, I turn from my other ways. But the, but the thing is, if, yeah, you can pray the prayer, but but as a preacher, if you're not calling people to repentance, that's 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 a whole different story. Yeah, you mm. can pray the prayer and tell people to say, "Oh, I repent." Say pe like tell people to say, "Okay, you say I repent." Say I repent. All right, all right. But it's a different thing to com to command people to repent mm. than than because it seems like he's like affirming them, like, yeah. "Oh, I'm standing side side by side with you, but I'm not challenging you. Yeah. I'm not bringing the gospel to you." Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, we're going to keep going. Here. Also, one more thing. It is absolutely driving me nuts. He blasphemes the name of God on the pulpit. Yeah. What kind of preacher does that? Yeah. Only one that doesn't Andy realize also, what kind of God he's blaspheming. Yeah, and he says, OMG, and all this and that. I'm sorry. If you're a pastor and you're blaspheming the name of your God, the God that you claim to preach, you have no right to 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 step into that pulpit. Absolutely no right. Yep. And yeah, I'm fired up because you're blaspheming my Savior. Amen. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm fired up because you're really spitting on the name of God. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but that that's not allowed. Not yep. allowed at all. And call me a hater or whatever, but. Look in the Old Testament. People got stoned for blaspheming God's name. Yeah. People were, weren't let go for blaspheming God's name. Mm. And God's name is to be revered and holy, mm. especially in the pulpit. And I take no 
um, what's the phrase? I take no uh, prisoners. Yeah. F- when people do that. Yes. Yeah. So, yep. anyways, keep going. You know you're loved here. I want you here. Will I marry you? I, I can't. Not because I don't think you found love. Just as a kingdom ambassador, when I look back at the orders that are in the constitution of the kingdom, I know people don't talk like this because they want it to be black and white, but there's some things on this earth I don't have the answers to. And so when I don't know, I just default. I come sub to the mission. I know people. All right. I'm going to skip to the part where he says something outrageous. We'll skip to this part. Yeah. My wife used to work in the, in the makeup community. There's tons of people who have different identity um, associations in that community. And one of her favorite people in there was a homosexual male, the sweetest guy in the world. I mean, had the love that most Christians don't have. Wait, Would what? do anything for people. I'm off on a tangent right now, but my heart is aching right now. Because the truth of the matter is, he wants a close relationship with God. No, he doesn't. The homos, every not even just the homosexual, every unbeliever in the Bible, it says they're enmity with God, they're hostile with God, they want nothing to do with God. Mm. That's what the Bible says. Yep. It says we're adversary, we're adversaries with God. We're sons of the devil. Mm-hmm. Jesus said to the Pharisees, "You're sons of the devil, you hypocrites." Yep. This, to say that the homosexual wants a relationship with God. Yeah, he might want a relationship with God, but it's not the God of the Bible. Yeah. It's a yeah. different God. It's true. Man. It's true. I, yeah. And, and, just, and, and you know what? Yeah, you take it over. Yeah. 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 Here's the thing. Why, why don't you find our next yeah. clip while we're at it? Um, <laughs> here's, here's the thing at the end of the day. No matter how much a person wants a relationship with God, no matter where they're coming from, right? Are we saying that that a, that a gay person is not welcome, you know, within the doors of a church? Well, here's the thing: if they are, if if they're going to continue to practice their homosexuality within the doors of the church, meaning mm-hmm. open open shows of like of affection and stuff with their partner and stuff like that, look, if they don't walk out of that church changed and not homosexual, I mean, to me. If a person continues on practicing that, then you mm. can't you can't continue to allow them in the church, especially if they're under the false notion uh, that they are in relationship with God. Mm. That's where you need to preach the gospel, the true gospel to them, mm. and and you need to let God work in their hearts. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, right. I know we got one more clip. Yeah. Serving the kingdom is going to require a sacrifice. Do you know how many things I'd like to do that I can't because I serve the king? I know most people won't tell you that. But I wish, I wish sometimes that I could just put on a mask and not be me for a second and do everything I felt to do in whatever way I felt to do it. All right. When you're born again, You are given a new heart to hate sin, Mm -hmm. to love Christ, love his word. That's what happens when you're born again. Mm -hmm. Um, Do we have temptation? Obviously, yeah, Mm -hmm. we do. We get temptation. Sometimes we get get pulled into temptation and fall into sin. But but we have a different relationship with sin when we're born again. We don't have these, uh, um, like... Like, oh, I want to do that. Mm. Oh, but God forbids me. Oh, man. Oh, that that's just absolutely terrible. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And so when we, you know, when we look at this video, when we talk about Michael Todd, let's ask again, is this a safe place for a guy like Carl Lentz? I mean, come on. It's not. It's not. And just so as far as, you know, I know we're wrapping it up now. But for those of you who watch Michael Todd, I would, I would reconsider. All right. And remember the true gospel. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and was raised on the third day. And he offers a new 
changed life. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.